Hello, this is Brandon Wilmarth with More Public Schools, and today we're going to be talking about Classroom for Google, uh, or I should say Google Classroom. And we're going to focus today on the teacher experience. So I've created a teacher today, and first things first, you're going to have to sign into your Google account using your at moreschools.com email address. So we've got Jane Teacher here today, and she's going to sign in for the first time, I believe. So if you've never done this, you can see what it looks like. She's going to have to accept the uh, terms and conditions after she gets through this tough CAPTCHA. Sometimes this comes up, sometimes it doesn't. Remember to put the default password right here. And if you don't know what that is, just email me. And I'm never good at these. Let's see if I can get through that one. I think that's an easy one. And voila. Remember with Google Chrome, don't ever let it save your passwords, especially if you're at a public computer and your classroom with kids can get to it. So accept and continue to your account after you read that and reset a password that is at least eight characters long so try to make it one that you can remember obviously all right nope again now the cool thing about uh, google chrome and google classroom is that it really integrates all of these apps really well so we're actually going to go straight to google classroom because i know that's why you guys are watching this video so just type in classroom.google dot com and then as soon as you do that you might want to go ahead and uh, save it as a bookmark up here uh, or wherever this is uh, pretty simple uh, you don't have a whole lot of options you can see that you're signed in here as well as down here it verifies that you are in fact Jane teacher if for some reason that's not you make sure that you sign out and get signed in with your app more schools if you're trying to sign in under a Gmail or non Google for education email it won't let you be a classroom teacher Speaking of, you are a teacher, so go ahead and click Teacher. And here we go. It is super simple past this point. Welcome to the classroom. Uh, this is it. You can go to your Home button, but you don't really have a whole lot yet because you have not yet created a class or joined a class. So if you click on the plus right here next to your name, you have two options. We're going to create a class today. Uh, you might be asking, why should I join a class? And uh, For instance, our math teachers for 4th, 5th, and 6th grade each have their own Google Classroom where all the teachers have joined. They're sharing files, whether it be Word files or Excel files, or uh, what a lot of people are starting to use, with, especially with Google Classroom, actual Google files like Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, uh, because they integrate so well. You can also share videos to help flip the classroom or just have a conversation. So we'll look at that later on in another tutorial for teacher collaboration. But right now, let's create a class. Uh, I'm an English teacher. So let's do English 1 and let's go first hour. So here we go. We create it. And it's just that simple. So at this point, ah, oh, nice. It even recognized that I had English in the title and it put a nice little background with books. That's kind of a new feature. and. This little tutorial box will take you around to all the features, but since you have me today, I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. Speaking of which, if I didn't like that theme, I could go ahead and select a theme right here and scroll through the many, many images that they have. And you know, I kind of like that one better, so I'm going to go ahead and select that theme. And now let's take a look at this. This is in our English 1 first hour class. Uh, I'm actually going to show you if you don't want to do just a single class, if you want to do all of your classes, uh, English second hour, fifth hour, whatever, just go back over here to your classroom main menu. And then you can go to the home button. And this is where you'll see all of your classes and that little plus sign. So I'm going to go ahead and create another class because this is going to be helpful here in a second. I have another English one class, but this one is second hour. Create. And there's that one. I'll go ahead and keep this one for a second hour. Uh, the reason I did that is because I'm going to show you how you can actually assign an assignment to multiple classes at the same time. Uh, so speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and do an announcement. Woohoo! Welcome to Google Classroom. Now, I actually want to jazz that up a little bit. I know that there is a YouTube video that is a little Classroom 101, so it, it's very easy to embed a YouTube video. So I'm going to do that. Search right here within Classroom. And there it is. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and select that one. It's a two-minute video. Add that. And 
I'm actually going to make sure that I select both my second hour and my first hour whenever I do this announcement. Now with an announcement, it's not necessarily the same as an assignment. I'll show you that here in a second, but this really is just a post. And you could add an image or a file or well, anything that is on your computer. Uh, same with the Google Drive, anything that you put in Drive you can attach very easily just like you saw with the YouTube video and last but not least as always a link so for instance if you have a Google form that really operates within a link or if you just want them to actually go to the website and not operate within classroom this is a good option so I'm gonna go ahead and post that to both of my classes right now and I'm gonna show you again how easy it is to switch between your classes I'm gonna go back to my first hour okay and here we are back at English first hour and so I want to go ahead and do a symbolism assignment right here. Uh, I've already started typing it out. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create the assignment title, the instructions, and then show you how easy it is to incorporate Google Drive. Uh, so I've created a Word file as well as a Google Doc. Now the reason that I want to go ahead and go with the Google Doc is because our students don't have to actually have Microsoft Word at home in order to work on this file. Uh, if you open this up, or add that I should say. With a Google Doc uh, you can create all the same things that you can with the Microsoft Word file except whenever you make a copy for each student they will actually be able to use their phones or any internet enabled device with a Google Doc app and actually type on their phone, their Chromebook, their iPad, uh, a desktop and they'll be able to complete this assignment. So with that said uh, I'm gonna go ahead and point out that I apologize because I transfer this over from a DOCX and to a Google Doc but this is the type of file right here so if you're wanting students to be able to do this on the internet without having to purchase Microsoft Office then you want to make sure that you go ahead and have the Google Doc file type for this and I also want to make sure that I assign this to both hours so here we go I want to give them the option to have an individual file so I'm going to make a copy for each student the really cool thing about this is it will actually create a copy with the student's name in the title of the uh, assignment file. So uh, organization, logistics, it's made really easy with Google Classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that. And I don't have any students right now. So whenever I do this, it's going to say zero of zero. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, whenever I come in in just a second and show you what it looks like for a student, uh, you will see one student if I go back to my teacher view. So Jane Teacher right now has uh, a welcome message and has a an assignment for both hours. And it takes just a little bit to copy over to both classes. So if I hit refresh, let's see what happens. See if I get that assignment and welcome message. There we go. All right, so uh, now I've got the welcome message and the assignment. Now how do I get students into my class? So I want to go ahead and show you the student section right here. Uh, the tutorial is hinting at what I was going to talk about too. The first thing that I always want to mention is that you can set permissions for the students. Uh, I actually like it when students post and comment and start some authentic conversations. However, every once in a while we have that student that probably shouldn't be posting uh, with, even if it is within a closed environment. Remember, no other person can see your classroom except for you and your students. Uh, not even me. So. Uh, I will say if you have those students that you don't think are going to be an appro or appropriate, then go ahead and uh, keep this only teacher can post. Or if you just want to have students comment on the post, the announcements, the assignments that you make, then you can select this middle one. For now, I'm going to go ahead and keep it open and uh, let that conversation evolve. Now this is the number that I need to have if I'm a student and want to enroll in your Google Classroom. That's really the easiest way to do it. A lot of times what I do with teachers is I go out there, we get into the computer lab, we have all the students uh, make sure that they can sign into their Google account and then go to classroom.google.com. They click the plus and then as a student, the only option they have is to join a class. You're going to see that in the next tutorial. The other way, if you do actually want to manually invite students because we don't create automatic classrooms for you yet, and I said yet, uh, you can go to our directory because we are a Google school and these, uh, well, as you can see, at morestudents.com, every A through Z student that we have is going to be in here. All the students. All you have to do is start typing, then check that box and invite students. If you're an elementary teacher, however, you really need to do this because those invites 
they go to a Gmail account. They go to their app, morestudents.com. Elementary students don't have their email turned on for Google. So uh, I would recommend using the code for the classroom and should be good. So this has been the teacher experience. There is a little bit more to it that I can do in an advanced tutorial, but this is the basics for you getting started, uh, making announcements, doing assignments. And we'll talk about some other features that Google Classroom can do as far as uh, collaborating and integrating with different types of Google files and docs. Hope you have fun with Google Classroom. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you want to actually collaborate and have me come out, just email me. It's brandonwilmarth at moreschools.com.